from Medialand, any of those kind of guys. Uh, you don't have to be all that fussy. Basically, you're just basically shearing the top off. That's really all we do. If there's any dead growth, we might take off some of the dead inside growth, but all we'll probably do on a regular shrub rows is just level the top. Now, whether you use a pruner, hedge trimmers, power pruners, it really won't make a lot of difference. These kind of roses don't take a lot of care. So all your Medialand, shrub roses, flower carpets, you're basically shearing them down, pick out the dead stuff. They grow so easily and so so prolifically, it's not really a big effort to, to grow them. So that's that will be a shrub rose. This, we're going to say, is a hybrid tea. <coughs> hybrid teas are a different animal altogether. If you cut just a hybrid tea off, flat like that, you're going to have a lot of growth, more a lot of growth in the inside. With those kind of roses, we're trying to push the growth to the outside. We're trying to get lots of air in because they're a little bit more prone to disease. Flowers are a little showing a little bit more fragrant, but we have to have a little bit more space, a little bit more air. In them. Same idea as what we do with a fruit tree. So if you look at this rose here, you can see it's got some dead growth, like sometimes a two-year-old or three-year-old wood on, and it's going to start to be a little bit heavy and woody. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut that out. So the first thing we're going to do is you cut out all the ugly stuff first, because that'll give you some idea of where you're working with. So we cut, cut that out first. Then what we want to do is we want to see if we can try to direct this rose out. So we've got basically three to four main stems. So I'm going to cut this one out of here out of the center first. I'm going to cut this one off, which is small. I'm going to work with this stem, this stem here, and probably this one to the front so that when we're doing it, we're going to get the growth going three different directions. Then I'm going to cut this light stuff out here. Now all of a sudden we've got three stems again. They're going all, all in sort of different directions there, like one out to each way. Then we're just going to basically cut off each of these guys. If you can see the buds better, just cut just be just above a bud. Now we've got three, three stems, each cut above a bud. Now you've got a base for a plant. The growth is going to come out in each direction. Don't have to worry that you're not going to get a lot of growth on it because the food that's stored in here is still the same amount of food that was going to break through. 30, 40 buds now is probably going to come out through 10 or 15. So we're going to get good, strong, solid growth coming in. Really nice flowers. So that's kind of the direction that you follow when you're doing any of your hybrid teas, grandiflorus, floribundas, those kind of plants. Um, you follow the same sort of thing with climbers. The difference being with a climber, obviously you don't want to get your climber down to a foot every year because you're trying to get them to climb. So on a climber, what you're doing is thinning out the growth so you end up with nice strong canes coming up and you take a lot of the side growth off. So again, the, the, the growth that comes off of those canes is really solid, but you don't want to sacrifice it. <laughs> this is simple carpus. Simple carpus and a lot of plants, a lot of deciduous plants tend to put on uh, a lot of growth and then get fairly woody. So typically what we would do with a, with a simple carpus that we're trying to, or, or uh, any other kind of deciduous plant, we're just trying to sort of keep it within shape and to try to try to keep the size down a bit. So we're going to do two things. First off, we're just going to prune it back just to keep the size down. So we're going to just trim it up like this. So all of a sudden now we've cut off a lot of the, a lot of the old leaf or old branches and the seed flower pods and stuff from last year. We've taken off the plant already. So you can see we're already now it's down to a smaller size. So now when it comes out, it's going to be a lot bushier. But we can do a couple other things too. Is that every year you can go through and cut off some of the woody part of the plant. So we'll just take this branch out. You see it's getting woody. There's not as many branches on it. So we really want to encourage new growth to come from the base all the time. So every year you just cut off a little bit of that woody growth. So that if you do that consecutively, you always got a lot of new, uh, new younger growth. And that's where a lot of your buds and flowers and stuff are going to come from. Works really important on things like, um, oh, uh, currants, flowering currants, fruiting currants, those kind of things, for scythia. Is a lot of those guys do need a good thorough pruning and thinning out. So that's kind of what we would do with that. This is yellow twig dogwood. Now one of the things that you want to do with dogwoods is again, you can see all this dead growth starting to form in the center. Again, that's some of the older growth because these guys are fairly bigger. So if it's a red twig dogwood, a yellow twig dogwood, they put on huge amounts of growth every year. And if we just go through and prune them like this, that's going to be good. It's going to cut them all. It's going to cut it down, reduce the amount of buds. But the problem is we still have a lot of twiggy growth. 
And with this particular plant, especially, like a, like a, like a, a quince even, same idea, is you're getting a lot of, uh, a lot of inside growth and it's starting to, you know, you're getting a lot of dead stuff in there. So we're gonna cut it all off first. We'll cut out all the dead first. And you're gonna wanna treat some of these guys more like a rose. The faster they grow, the more vigorous you're gonna wanna be at cutting them back. So we're gonna take out all the thin growth first. So unlike this one where we're, we're cutting out one chunk of heavy growth, because this is a more denser, bushier plant. These guys, we're gonna cut out the thin growth. Sort of like this. And then we're gonna stump them back really hard. And then what we're gonna get out of here is we're gonna get big, long shoots of nice growth. Because the thing with, uh, the thing with yellow twig dogwood and red twig dogwood is, is that you want nice three to four foot new stems every year. So you wanna prune them down nice and low. So usually that's about six inches because these will still put on three foot shots of growth each year. Problem is, is that you say the way this one was pruned, this one's pruned for sort of like a retail sale where we have to have something bushy, but once it's in your yard, you want those nice straight stems. That's what you want, because that's what gives you the color in the winter and looks really showy. Um, every, anybody have smoke trees at all? Again, the same type of thing with those. If you have a smoke tree in your yard, you want to prune it back. If you want to keep it contained, unless you want the th unless you want your smoke tree 12 or 15 feet tall, if you want to keep it into a five or six foot high bush, you're going to prune it almost to the ground each year because they'll put on five feet of growth each year. You see a lot of smoke trees sold as a cut flower. What they what they do is they you know they sell the stems as a foliage uh, in the in the fall for cut flower arrangements. They will actually cut those back to about a foot and a half, two feet every year, like when they're cutting stems, because you want that new growth to come out really strong. This gives you a, a little bit better idea here. This is a pussy willow. You can see how big the stalk is. You can see how far we were sort of cutting that back each year. So if you're cutting, if you're taking these in and putting them in a vase and letting them come out, you. You probably don't need them quite that long, but you'd be cutting them, let's say, like this. You'd be taking them in the house, the whole bundle, and, and letting them come out and, and enjoying them inside. The problem being is if you leave this growth and let it grow, then it's going to grow to here, and it's going to get taller and taller, and it's going to get weaker and weaker. This one's already been pruned here and here. The problem being is now if we prune it here and here, it, it might get kind of stumpy. So this one's a little ugly. So this is where one of the bigger pruners comes in. You can basically just go and do that too. Because wherever there was ever a bud before in this stem, there's still buds there. And now it's going to break out of here, and it's, you're going to get five or six feet of growth, and you might get eight or ten branches. 